Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an excellent game to share with you from the 1956 Moscow Championship. On the white end, Alexander Chishchikov, playing against Tigran Petrosian, the ninth world champion, the Iron Tigran, the great master of the exchange sacrifice. Okay, the opening we work with, French defense, what will be the Iron Man's weapon of choice against knight c3? Well, it's bishop b4, the Vinever variation. We got a pinned knight, and as a result, pressure now on e4. This provokes e5. Black continues with b6. The most popular move is c5, striking white center right away. What's the story behind b6? Well, a couple notes. Black may already have his eye on exchanging his bad bishop for white's good bishop through a6. A reason to not have a black pawn on c5 so soon? This is revealed soon enough. After queen g4, there's now a new way for black to defend g7. You don't have to go uncastled. You don't have to push your pawn, create two holes, and invite h4, h5. The g6 pawn would be an excellent hook for white. Bishop f8 is available. Move played in the game. This is how black copes with the pressure on g7. He's underdeveloping. How can you get away with this? Well, bishop b4, and then back to f8. Black has gained something, has provoked a fixed center. So even though white has a lead in development, that's not really seen as such a great positive in these slower positions. Black will have time to make up ground. It's going to develop slowly. We continue with knight f3, queen d7, bit of a um, technical note here, queen d7. White responds with bishop e3 here. I think queen d7 in a way is saying, I would maybe like to see you make a commitment with your light square bishop. So for instance, if bishop d3, maybe now black is a bit more inclined to pursue this bad for good bishop exchange with bishop a6. Only after first seeing this light square bishop take a step. And in that way, if there is a capture on a6, okay, fine. It took you two moves to get to a6. All right. White does not play with the light square bishop here. Uh, the other post for this guy, let's say b5, no problems for black. You can meet that with c6. Bishop d3, bishop a6 is good. And in the event of bishop a4, you can continue with a5, looking to trap the bishop and even continue with bishop a6, cutting into white's kingside. All right, in this game, queen d7 met with bishop e3. White at this stage has no interest in pursuing a light square bishop exchange. He continues with knight c6. He's going for a different setup at this point. a3, don't have to worry about any knight jumps, targeting c2. Bishop b7. We got a pinned knight here. Queenside castles, kingside castles. There's something I left out. When queen g4 was played, uh, it was met with bishop f8. Convenient way to defend g7. What we're going to see in this game, this queen post on g4, I think in a way she maybe wants to be back home in this environment, in this opposite side's castles position. She's going to be feeling some pressure shortly. Black's going to be looking to play on the king's side, going after the white king. White's going to be looking to play on the queen side, or at least taking a step in that direction in this game with b4. She's not going to feel so comfortable. Okay, we continue with knight g to e7. Follow up now, b4. Rather than b4, the computer's recommending knight to e2. Tough to really know what the best plan is here for white. Knight e2, a note behind it, is to meet 
f6 in this position with knight f4 exerting pressure on the newly weakened e6 pawn. Okay, in this game there is no knight e2, instead b4, and the follow-up f6. This is where white now goes wrong. We see a slight shift in the evaluation. Not a decisive one, but black starts to be the better side after this move played in the game, rook f to e1. What's considered best? Best here is bishop d3, with an eye on the f5 square, prepared to meet knight f5 with bishop takes knight. A knight on f5, very strong piece. The bishop's ready to knock it out. I'm going to put on a few more moves to show you what's considered best play here. After h4 in this position, it reads about 0.4. Uh, h4 is important in this position, by the way. If you play a different move, let's say rook f to e1 in this position, seems sensible, centralized rook supporting a big pawn, you would be losing to g5. This is the point behind h4 to hold up this very advanced, this trio of pawns will now net black some material one way or the other with f4 a fork or after h4 queen h3 g4 another fork okay another detail here if white thinks to himself well let me go ahead and chop on f6 here and saddle black with double isolated pawns hang on Yes, you give black double isolated pawns, but you would also provide black a path towards the white king, now that there's no g pawn. Okay, in this game, no bishop d3. Instead, it's rook f to e1. Black's next two moves are knight f5 and then h5. Computer says, switch that order. What's the reason for this? Well, by starting with knight f5, queen h5 is considered the best response, and this move would hold up the h-pawn's advance. Now, in the game, the response is queen h3, and black's able to simply follow up with h5. If queen h5 is played here, uh, yes, it's true, the queen can be kicked from this square with g6, but note the significance of having the pawn on g6 instead of g7. The g7 pawn, or the g pawn I should say, is no longer around supporting f6, and as a result, it's no longer there supporting e5. Now, white would be in a position to capture on f6 without worrying about giving black a file to work with. Right around the corner for white is this capture on f6 followed up with knight e5. Okay, white in this game does not take advantage of this move order subtlety. Goes to h3. In comes h5. Do you see what just happened? h5 has just robbed the white queen of two squares. Can't go to h5 anymore, and you can't go to g4. What squares does this queen have? h3, the one she sits on. That's it. White now goes wrong. Plays g3 here. It's understandable, g3, when you factor in Wait a second, I don't even have a square for my queen. At least g3 gives the queen a couple squares. She can breathe a little bit easier. In general, you really don't want to be playing like this. Black's looking to attack your king, moving pawns forward like this. Or just, you know, you're inviting black to create tension that much faster with the pawn, and as a result, an open file towards the king. Okay. In this game, it's g3. What is considered 
best play here. It says at this stage, go ahead and capture on f6. Now, this may be a bit confusing because just a moment ago, I was pointing out if you make this capture, you're giving black a file to work with. Why is it maybe important to play this move in this case? Uh, well, it has to do with eliminating this g5 idea. By making the capture on f6, you don't have to worry about black advancing with g5 and next up g4 with a fork. It wants to continue from here with bishop d3 and then this capture on f5. This is still a very good position for black. It calls it around minus 0.8. Queen, by the way, still stuck. <laughs> okay. We do not have the capture on f6 followed up with the bishop tracking down the knight. It's g3 here. Follow up. a6. The bishop goes back in this game, maintains the pin on the knight. Alternatives for white. If you play bishop d3, black can continue here with knight takes bishop. And regardless of which way white recaptures, the g pawn gets rolling. This is an excellent position for black, threatening a fork now with g4. Okay. Alternative instead of bishop d3, if you capture the knight, black can recapture with the queen targeting this guy and next up again we have this g5 g4 idea all right in this game the bishop keeps the pin now we have g5 what are you doing about g4 well white plays g4 himself pop quiz how would you respond here feel free to pause the video okay I said in the beginning, uh, the great master of the exchange sacrifice. Yep, he's prepared to give it up. He captures on g4, says, go ahead, take my rook. I'm grabbing your knight. How good are the white rooks in this environment? They're not really functioning so well, staring at their own pawns. There's a big threat here as well to capture on b4, targeting the knight and the queen. White continues in this position with queen h5. So let's just see this in action. Let's say the pawn captured on f6. This is where we would have bishop captures b4. Black will soon win material. Also, if the queen captures on f6 here, queen h4 is very strong. Black can afford to give up a pawn, even if it's hitting with check. Nearby for black, queen h3, queen g2. In addition to that, there's an idea to develop the bishop and put the rook on h8, forming a battery. Black will soon crash through on h2. What is a point behind queen h5? Don't allow this queen to take up an active post on h7. Okay, from here, it's b5. In response to this, white captures, gives up some material, maintains a pin on the c6 knight. If instead the bishop goes to b3, there's plenty of ways to continue here. Any of the captures in the center like this are very good. All right, white's try here is to give up some material. Takes on b5, twice, maintains the pin, follow up here, captures on e5, and at this point it's king h1. Uh, what other tries are there here for white? With king h1, at least the rook has a square on g1. g2 is a sensitive point right around the corner. Maybe some defense of that square. Any other try here if there's a capture on e5 instead. Queen g4 is very good. Getting out of the pin, targeting the e5 pawn. Okay, in this game, what's tried? King h1, 
queen g7 increasing the pressure here this center is completely collapsing for white we're soon going to have a two to zero majority in the center follow up here is bishop captures knight bishop captures bishop pawn captures pawn and we just continue to develop this last move is clearing the way for rook to h8 follow up now b5 no thanks i don't want your pawn you'd be activating a rook keeps the bishop on the main diagonal nice and solid after queen g4 activating the rook nearby rook h4 queen goes back to g1 voluntarily uh what other try is there here for white there are no tries you can make a an active looking move you're going nowhere here even if you get to this square the bishop says so what uh black can sacrifice on h2 in a position like this and go into h3 it's mate soon enough on g2 all right in this game with queen g1 at least you're defending against this sacrifice okay in comes d4 with tempo bishop's eyes now opened and he presses forward with g4 bishop f4 you're trying to stop g3 are you g3 anyway after bishop captures pawn it's knight captures bishop check white resigns what are you supposed to do the h pawn is pinned your options are queen takes knight pawn takes knight you take with the pawn you're getting hit with discovered check with a fork and i was thinking initially after the queen blocks you take the queen nope black can even do better with queen takes g3 a beautiful follow-up here taking advantage of the pinned pawn and queen mate right around the corner queen takes h2 or rook takes h2 if this we're gonna have checkmate next rook captures the h pawn will be mate an alternative at this stage instead of pawn captures knight queen takes knight could be met with queen takes queen and we would have a beautiful bishop checkmate at the end so what did you think of this one anyhow feel free as usual to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below i hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away that's all for now take care